All right. Once again, good morning. Welcome, everybody. Let's um, take a moment to please uh, pray together, and then we will get started. May I request somebody to please pray with the class? All right, I'll pray. Go ahead. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you for another privilege. We want to thank you for another opportunity you've given unto us. We want to thank you for your mercy, your kindness, your faithfulness to your word, even when we fail you. Father, we thank you, God, that even the words we're about to hear, that, Father, you open our ears to hear, open our minds to receive, that at the end of this class, all glory and honor be ascribed unto your name alone. We commit everyone unto your hands. The Father, your name shall be glorified in every life represented here. Teach us what we need to teach. Teach us what we need to hear. Open our eyes to see what we need to see. Open our ears to hear what we need to hear for your kingdom's sake. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Once again, good morning, everybody. Thank you for connecting to the class. This um, is our course on developing the human spirit. And uh, we've been touching on various aspects. Um, the last two classes, we were talking about uh, the human spirit and how we interact with the spiritual realm. So I've um, just uh, shared the notes. Um, it's, it's kind of in a rough uh, state, but I shared the notes in the um, in the in the coursework section. Uh, we'll just quickly review it and then move forward into uh, what we want to share today. So we this this was chapter five. Uh, we spent some time trying to understand, you know, how the human spirit interacts with the spiritual realm. Uh, first of all, we were dealing with you know how God works with the born again human spirit. Uh, we talked about how the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit and he gives revelation. The fruit of the spirit come forth out of our human spirit. And also the Holy Spirit works through our spirits. I kind of in included this little section that we had a discussion on earlier. I just put that in here for completeness sake. Um, then last week, we were talking about spiritual experiences in scripture. And um, uh, one of the objectives in uh, highlighting this is, or was, that uh, we need to be open to spiritual experiences, even in our day and time. Because the God who worked in the past, as recorded for us in the Bible, he hasn't changed and he hasn't stopped working. He still is at work and the same Holy Spirit who moved upon the prophets or moved upon people in the Bible, whether the Old or the New Testaments. Yes, there were this, the record is about his working, you know, 2000 plus years ago and more, but the Holy Spirit has not changed. And our human spirit, the capabilities of our human spirit has not changed. You know, God, God we're still designed the same way as people were uh, uh, many, many years ago. And so in our, and through our interactions with the Holy Spirit, uh, with God himself, we should be able to, we should be open to um, uh, these uh, experiences. Uh, and we just highlighted a few about Moses, Isaiah, Ezekiel. I just highlighted a few of those. And there are several, <clears throat> sorry, several. The Bible is full of that, all the way from Genesis to Revelation. 
there are numerous people who had uh, different kinds of spiritual experiences and the intent was just to highlight uh, some of them and then as you read the scriptures and you you see what happened you say you know uh, 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 that can happen even today God can do it to us even today so we talked about Daniel and uh, Paul we can talk about his experiences John the beloved in Revelation we can talk about his experiences and so on so in as much as you know God the Holy Spirit moves upon people we are also aware that demonic powers affect the human spirit and I'm not getting into those details but you know we are aware of it uh, our intent in this course is to really talk about the born again human spirit and our interaction spirit realm but uh, just as an aside, uh, we understand that a person who's not born again, who is, you know, we say in spiritual darkness, can also open up and be affected by demonic powers. So, in as much as God and the Holy Spirit and angelic beings interact, good angels interact with the believer, uh, and there are times God, of course, interacts with the unbelievers. In a similar manner, we recognize there are demonic powers that can bring about influence and possession and empowerment of people. So in a sense, you know, we are able to connect the spiritual and natural realms as people. And let's just talk about us as born again believers. We are able to connect the spiritual realm and the natural realm. So we are operating and living in the natural realm. We live in these physical bodies and we interact constantly with this natural realm. But our human spirit connects with the spiritual realm again. You know, experience God, listen to God, receive wisdom from God, uh, receive directives from God, receive empowering from God, and then release that into this natural realm. So really you and I, have this you know wonderful opportunity to uh, uh, to operate in dual realms the spiritual and the natural and uh, we must develop our ability to operate in the spiritual and from the spiritual into the natural so now i want to move into uh, the next chapter today uh, just to talk about the faculties of the human spirit now um, we, uh, you would have uh, been exposed to some of this or all of this, I would say, uh, when uh, in the course on the Holy Spirit, uh, you would have gone through uh, the book Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in that there is a chapter that we, we talk about this because, of course, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are released through the faculties of the human spirit into the natural world. So you would have already been exposed to this. Uh, so it's not necessarily something new, but hopefully we can, you know, uh, reiterate this, uh, emphasize this once again, and also maybe open up a, uh, uh, some, some new understanding when it comes to the faculties of the human spirit. Now, what we can see in scripture is that just as the human body has faculties. We call them senses, uh, five physical senses. Uh, we can see in scripture, both Old and New Testament, that uh, the human spirit also has, we will just use the word spirit senses. The Bible doesn't use that term. We are just using that term for communication purposes. That means the spirit has faculties. The human spirit has faculties or sense, like just we say five physical senses, we could say five spiritual senses, uh, channels by which it is picking up information, right? And you see this in both testaments, for example, in Deuteronomy 29 and verse 4, God, you know, he says, look, I haven't given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear. Uh, uh, so he's talking about heart. I know I've quoted only part of this this whole portion, but the focus here is um, the heart has been given eyes to see, ears to hear, 
and the ability to perceive or receive knowledge. Okay? So there is the physical eyes, which he's referencing here in verse 2. You have seen all the law, all that the Lord did before your eyes. So this was their physical eyes. They physically, they saw with their physical eyes the miracles, the signs, the all the things that God did in Egypt. And yet, he's talking here in verse 4, as he begins to talk here in verse 4, about spiritual capacity. So this is natural, physical capacity. Here he's talking about spiritual, your heart perceiving, your eyes, spiritual eyes seeing, spiritual ears hearing. And again, another example would be in Isaiah 6, God is telling Isaiah, you know, after his commission, he says, go tell this people, keep on hearing, you do not understand, you keep on seeing, you do not perceive. Uh, the heart of the people has become dull. The heart is referring to the heart, the human spirit. The human spirit has become dull. That means the spiritual senses or the faculties of the inner person, the heart is, you know, unused, underdeveloped, uh, it is not do fulfilling its intended function. You know, the ears are heavy. It's all stuffed up. Can't, can't listen. Eyes can't see, you know, and the heart can't understand. Uh, so, you know, he's saying this is their spiritual condition. So he's saying, Isaiah, tell these people, you know, this is your spiritual condition. You're hearing, you don't understand. You see, you don't perceive. And what's happened? Why? Because your heart, your heart, the faculties of your heart have dulled. Yeah. And therefore, they cannot be healed. They cannot be healed. And, and, and Jesus quotes this in uh, Matthew 13. He's using that Isaiah, the passage from Isaiah. And as he rebukes the people, I will not rebuke, but he says, look, this is their condition, just like Isaiah said. Um, so, that was a spiritual condition of the people and their spiritual dullness prevented them from returning to the Lord and being healed, being you know, experiencing the work of God in their lives. So you see um, the connection here. You see how if the faculties of the human spirit are dulled, it is actually keeping us from experiencing what God wants us to experience. In this case, for them to return to God and be saved and healed and delivered and uh, receive what God wants us to do. And this, that, that, that Jesus quoted the same thing in his own ministry. He says, you know, G Jesus was there, wonderfully anointed by God, uh, anointed by the Spirit to heal, to deliver, to all the wonderful things. But spiritually, these people were not able to see, hear, and understand. And that kept them from coming to God and being healed or receiving what God wanted for them receive. So it is, you know, therefore important for us to make sure that the faculties of our heart or our, we say spirit senses or our spiritual faculties should, you know, keep on improving, get sharper, get better. You know, our eyes, spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, ability to understand, receive, should get better. That's, that's for us to learn how to train them and get them. But it also means that God will use our faculties, our, the heart faculties of our human spirit. That's his primary way to communicate to us. And we, we established this in the previous chapter when we saw how, you know, it is spirit to spirit. The spirit bears witness with our spirit. This Holy Spirit gives revelation to our spirit. So the Holy Spirit is first and foremost communicating <clears throat> to our human spirit through the faculties of our spirit. Right? So uh, just came, you know, we usually put this little diagram here. Uh, it's only for education, training purposes, okay? <laughs> uh, it's not like uh, something that you, uh, 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 that's prescribed in scripture. It's just for us to explain. So. Um, um, just as the body, the human body has these physical senses we, which we mentioned, information from this other realm, the natural realm, 
is, uh, is picked up by these physical senses. It goes to our soul, which is our mind, will and emotions, our ability to reason, analyze, you know, and make decisions and then take action. Uh, so it goes here, we process all this information and then we decide what to do, we take action. In a similar way, we must understand that the spiritual realm, that we connect with the spiritual realm through our spirit faculties. And uh, we can establish very clearly in scripture, in which we will, that the human spirit has at least these five faculties. You know, we've already seen here, he's talking about the heart, and, uh, you know, he's talking about the heart, he says, he talks about ears. He talks about, um, he talks about uh, eyes. So that means the heart has these faculties. And he talks about understanding or perceiving or receiving, you know, uh, information. We could translate that into maybe your ability to perceive or feel or understand, or put all, put all this information together. So that's all happening here in the spirit, the heart. So you can feel, you can see, you can hear, you can taste, smell, you, you put it all together. And then from here, you're passing it on to the soul, the human mind, uh, which then, you know, again, processes that information further and determines action. You know, you say, okay, I'm going to do this. Why? Because of what I have received in the spirit. Now, there's a, there is a big difference between what comes through the spirit and what comes through the body. What comes through the body is confined to the natural realm. And so it is pretty easy for the soul to process because uh, the, the, the soul is very accustomed to this kind of information. You know, what we feel, see, uh, yeah. We, we kind of spend a lot of time here. Uh, with information from the natural realm, and we can analyze and you know determine action. However, the spiritual realm is way beyond or way bigger than the soul, and the soul is not very accustomed or habituated to handle information from the spiritual realm. So that's why there's there's quite a bit of training that's needed, right? Uh, the, our spirit, first of all, we need to sharpen our faculties of the human spirit, uh, receive information, what the Holy Spirit is telling us, what God is speaking to us by his spirit, because the spirit bears witness with our spirit. So we need to understand, you know, how the Holy Spirit is communicating to us, uh, but, you know, which our faculty he's, he's speaking into. If he's speaking into your ear, spiritual ear, if he's giving you something to see, uh, if he's working through your feeling uh, or a spiritual feeling as you're working through taste and smell uh, or you're just imparting understanding or perception to your human spirit. Yeah. Uh, so we need to learn how to pick that up, process that, and then pass it on to our soul. And our soul also, our mind also needs to uh, uh, you know, become more and more comfortable with processing that kind of information because it's through our mind that we are then going to tell our body to take action. So this is a training or a learning process for us. But what did we say in the previous chapter? You know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit come like this. The power of God is often released through this. I'm not saying exclusively because at the very end of this chapter, we'll say that God could work directly on our soul or our body. God could work independent of us, of course. But the norm is that uh, God will work. He will release his power through our spirit, going through our soul and body. You know, so for instance, Jesus said, out of your innermost being, your spirit will flow rivers of living water. So your innermost being, that's here, your spirit. And from here, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit is going to be released out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So when the Holy Spirit wants to flow, we need to let him, we need to allow him 
but then that requires the cooperation of our soul and our body right? so that we need to learn how to work with the Holy Spirit. So what we want to do is, um, and it, this is going to be a very interesting study, uh, which I would encourage you to undertake, which is you go through the scriptures and you look, uh, look, you know, from Genesis to Revelation, look for examples where uh, this interaction is happening. That means there's an interaction of the spirit faculties with the spiritual realm. You know, look for that. And I've tried to do a little bit of it, but there's a lot more. And I get excited every time I, you know, I, I uncover something in the Bible. And I'm still uncovering. So uh, I'm still learning. Uh, you know, it's just really exciting. Wow. Okay, that's how it happens. Oh, uh, uh, what, what it happened, you know, and right now I'm reading through Zechariah. And, uh, and it's very interesting in the chapter one, chapter two, Zechariah is seeing four horses and uh, there's communication happening. Angels are speaking to the angel of God, which is the Lord Jesus, and to Zechariah. So there is, here is a man, and he's interacting with the spiritual realm, and God is using natural images like the horses uh, to communicate something to him. Now, that doesn't mean there are horses in the spiritual realm. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean that. Or there are physical horses. I mean, there are uh, horse, spiritual horses running around this person. It doesn't mean that God is using images from our world to speak to him. Uh, because, you know, he also sees four horns. So it doesn't mean horns are floating around in the spiritual realm. No, God is just using some images from the natural realm to speak to Zechariah. But so it's just interesting to analyze. Here's a man. God is speaking to him. Uh, spiritual beings are interacting with him. But how is that interaction happening? God is using images from our natural world to communicate something to Zechariah. Then Zechariah sees somebody holding, you know, a measuring tape or a measuring rod. Uh, you know, he's seeing somebody, you know, like a mason who's going to measure things. Oh, that's, of course, an image from our, our world that God is showing him in a vision. But that image is basically telling him, you know, I'm going to rebuild the city. I'm going to reconstruct Jerusalem. And that was part of Zechariah's vision or mission uh, to, you know, to see the rebuilding now of the city of Jerusalem. So it's very interesting, you know, when you read the Bible and, 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 and you look at the interaction of people with the spiritual realm. That means we're talking about this aspect. You know, their spiritual faculties are interacting with the spiritual realm and God is giving them information that is way beyond their soul, way beyond their soul. You know, so Zechariah says, you know, in chapter three, God is telling him, look, uh, actually even in chapter two, he's, he's giving him information way about things about the millennium, you know, my, my city will be rebuilt. I will come and dwell in Jerusalem. I will dwell and inhabit the city. So this is way beyond Zechariah's understanding, right? And he's speaking all those things. He's, 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 he's releasing it. That means he's not letting his soul stop him from communicating what he is seeing in the spirit, even though this is way beyond his ability to process. You know, in the sense that, you know, if he sat down there and said, you know, what is the meaning of the branch? You know, what is the meaning of a stone with seven eyes? He, he would have got stumped right there. He would not have said anything because he's seeing a stone with seven eyes. He said, what is that? that? That doesn't make sense. But he's continuing to speak. He is not letting his soul stop it. You know, so he sees four horses, different colors. He just says, you know, I see four horses, different colors. Now, it's in the spiritual realm. Yeah. So uh, uh, I'm just, I just picked up Zechariah because I, I, I'm reading Zechariah now. But, you know, like this, when you read different parts of the Bible, you begin to see, you begin to learn. Wow. This is how the human spirit is interacting with God. And this is how God is communicating information to the human spirit. And then from there, it's being released in, in the natural realm. So our 
objective is to train our faculties, spiritual faculties, to learn to listen to God, the Holy Spirit, how He communicates, how does He speak, how does He move, and uh, in our goal is to develop these faculties. Okay, so we will go through each one of these um, five faculties. Uh, look at some examples and and uh, and just share you know things that uh, that we can uh, we can expect to happen uh, in, 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 in 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 and through God touching or God moving or God uh, communicating to our spirit faculties. Okay, so that's our object. How how do we do this? And then the best way is to best way to learn and to develop your spiritual faculties is by practice. That is by doing it. And it's good to have the theory. That is, uh, you, it's good to know what the Bible teaches, which is very important. It's the starting point so that we don't go off into doing something that's wrong. So it's very important to have a biblical foundation. You go to the Bible, find out from the Bible, <clears throat> find out from the Bible how these spirit faculties are working. Then next step is practice it. You know, ask God to move on your spirit faculties. You know, as you're interacting, doing different things, your normal day-to-day -day routine, ask God to move upon your spirit faculties. Say, God, show me something. God, uh, speak to me. God, move upon me. God, reveal information to me, right? So you're intentionally asking God. And, and then you experience the moving. You experience God working through your spirit faculties, right? Then you go back to the Bible. You discover some more. You learn some more. You know, how did John have his revelation? You know, and it's just fascinating reading through Revela the book of Revelation. John was hearing sounds. He was seeing things. He was feeling things. Uh, and uh, these are all things in the spirit. Uh, you know, he heard the voice like many waters. He heard, heard the voice of a trumpet, and yet it was there was a message coming through the trumpet. You know, when you and I hear the blowing of a trumpet, there's no message. You know, you don't necessarily get a message, but John was getting a message through the sound of a trumpet, through the falling of many waters, and so on. You know, so that means God can communicate a message. Through through what seems like a sound, but you you you're, you're receiving clear, uh, well articulated information through what yeah, I'm talking about in the spiritual realm through what seems like the sound of a trumpet. You know, so that's something we have to begin to get to understand. Okay, uh, we will get into this. Let's just pause here. I hope everybody is with me. Okay, all right. Um, I'm just pausing here. Uh, any questions till this point? Do you know? Uh, are we all together? Um, okay, there's a question here from Elisha. Spiritual faculty is limited to the heart, eyes, and ears only. So, Elisha, uh, what we can see in scripture is there are at least five spiritual senses or faculties, right? What we see, what we hear. Uh, what we feel, and there's also that of taste and smell. We, we can see that in the Bible. But uh, there is also, you know, what, because I, I, I couldn't put it as part of these five faculties, uh, I, 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 I separated it and I put it as seven functions. And so that's something we will cover in the next chapter or in, in the next section, seven functions. And one of the functions is um, just perception. Now, I, I didn't know how to put perception as a faculty, but what happens is, so I just put it as a function of the spirit. That means the human spirit just receives knowledge. Suddenly you just know. And then you, uh, so I'm not, I'm not able to say, you know, did it come through your seeing or your hearing or your feeling? I, 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 I don't 
it's hard for me to say it came through this particular channel, but your spirit has received revelation. It just knows. So that's why I call it just as a, as a function of perception or you know, receiving knowledge. And uh, it, you're able to say things which your mind did not know. Okay, but you just know in your spirit. So what I did was, I, okay, I said, okay, you know, five faculties is easy to explain because it parallels the human uh, faculty, the physical faculties, but we also can receive seven functions. One of which I'm, I'm just talking about is this uh, perception, just receiving knowledge. And since I wasn't able to put it into one of these clear cut senses, I just kept it separately. And uh, so to answer your question, you know, we should keep these two together. That means the human spirit has these faculties that we can talk about, but it also has these functions. Uh, that it's capable of and uh, you know it's like this human body right I, I know I have five physical senses but I also know I can the body is capable of you know doing things it's you know a, a lot more and uh, the person is not just the five physical senses the person is a combination of all this so Spiritually speaking, uh, you have five physical senses, but you also have these seven operations and uh, uh, it all works together. It all works together. Yeah. Okay, so we will cover those seven operations. Thank you, Thank you Pastor. All right. So, Beth. Uh, Beth's question. Where does intuition fall? We sometimes refer to as a sixth sense. Yeah. So intuition, which is something like a knowing that comes out of your spirit. Right? It's just like, you just know, and we call it, you know, generally people call it intuition. Like, you know, we can't explain it, but I just know. So that I would call it as one of the seven functions of the human spirit. Sometimes it's the conscience, it's the voice of your spirit speaking, which we refer to it, which falls as part of the category of intuition. And sometimes it's actually the Holy Spirit who has put that knowing in your human spirit. So that also expresses itself, like you just know in your spirit. And, uh, you know, uh, it expresses itself as a as a something. How did I know this? I don't, you know, and you can't put put your finger, uh, you know, wrap your head around it, so to speak. But you just know in your spirit where did it come from? Whether it either came from your conscience, or it came because the Holy Spirit gave you that knowledge in your spirit, and you just know. And so, and we we refer to it commonly as intuition, but this is where it's coming from. Okay. Uh, so Anita says, please share any of your experiences. Yeah, I'll try to share a few as we go along. You know, and I've, uh, I don't want to spend all all time talking about all my experiences, but I will share some. You know, under each of those headings uh, as we go along. So uh, Beth asks a question: uh, Unbelievers also have intuition. Does this mean the Holy Spirit speaks to them and they don't realize? So when unbelievers have intuition, it comes from two sources so one is there is the conscience every unbeliever also has a conscience right now they may suppress their conscience they may suppress that is the voice of their own human spirit telling them right and wrong and you know do this do, do, don't do that uh, so they may suppress it or they may listen to it you know and so it just depends at different people their conscience is in a different state in the 
So one, it's their own conscience speaking to them. They're the voice of the human spirit speaking to them. Secondly, for an unbeliever, and I'm not saying this happens to all unbelievers, but for an unbeliever, we know that the Holy Spirit is also ministering to them. This is in John 16, because Jesus said, He, the Holy Spirit, will convict them of righteousness, of truth, of, of sin, righteousness, and judgment. This is in John 16. I think it's verse 8. Um, so Holy Spirit is dealing with the unbeliever in three areas. Sin, righteousness, judgment. So the Holy Spirit is going to, you know, uh, deal with the unbeliever. Part of it would be to open their eyes or you know, how the Holy Spirit brings about that conviction. He will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Thirdly, we also know that an unbeliever could be open to uh, the working of demonic powers. And I'm not saying everything that an unbeliever has is demonic. No, that's not so. But they could. And, you know, uh, some unbelievers... Um, uh, if they open themselves up more to dark spirits, they will begin to get information from them. And they, it may seem like as it's flowing from their own spirit, but they're actually being empowered by demonic spirits. And sometimes we refer to these as familiar spirits, uh, things that they've opened themselves up and become friendly with. So there are all of these possibilities. Okay, okay we will take another question and let's see if we can move a little forward today. Please, Christopher. Christopher, you're okay, your question. Okay, you typed it in the chat. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So Christopher's question is, you had mentioned that there may be cases where the Holy Spirit may bypass the human spirit and go directly to the solar body. Could you uh, please, ex could you please give us some examples and why this happens? So, so, the Holy Spirit, and that's actually the last point um, in, in this whole section on the faculties. Um, you know, there are times, so that's at the end of, towards the end of these notes, I've put a little, you know, God can touch our soul and body. So uh, there are times, and I'll just talk about it now since you asked a question. So there are times when, you know, God can bypass interacting with the spirit and just going, touching the soul and the body. And there are many examples. So for, for instance, something that's very drastic is the apostle, uh, sorry, Saul on the road to Damascus, right? So he's riding on the, he's not, at that point he's not saved. And he has a bright, he has this Damascus, we call it the Damascus road experience. He sees a light. He hears the, the voice, he's thrown to the ground, he is blinded. So here God has impacted him so powerfully. He's impacted him physically, what has happened. He is thrown to the ground, blinded. So that's God dealing with the body directly. Um, but he has also had a spiritual experience. He has heard sound. He has seen something. Which those around him, you know, they did not have that same experience. It's interesting. Um, you know how Paul, let's see, now this is in Acts, um, Acts 9. And uh, it says in Acts 9, 7, it says, they heard a voice. This is those around Paul, around Saul. They heard a voice, but they saw no one. Right, and um, so now, what did they hear? I don't know what, what you know what the battalion of soldiers and others who were going with Saul. I don't know what they heard, but Acts chapter nine, verse seven says. They also heard a voice. 
that means I am, it doesn't tell us whether it's a physical voice or spiritual voice. But let's assume it was physical because they all heard it. So God is dealing with the physical. But Saul not only heard, but he also saw. Right? He saw a bright light. It hit him hard. Now, uh, what was this bright light? Of course, it's God. It's God's glory, God's radiance. But let's assume it was also something in the physical. You know, and we're not very definite, okay? Because it just says he saw a light, he heard a voice. It could be in the spiritual, it could be in the natural. But let's assume for now that the seeing and the hearing was also physical. Because for sure, the throwing to the ground was physical. The blinding of his eyes was physical. But let's assume that the sound and the light was also physical. I mean, it was something so bright. But it was something that impacted Saul because the others around didn't see it. They heard the voice, they didn't see it, you know. So there seems to be this overlap of the spiritual, the natural, but the impact was in the physical. Ultimately, what happened? In an instant, there was spiritual transformation. So God impacted the physical, which is the soul and the body, in such a way, and of course, there was a conversation, you know, he said, who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, etc. So there's this conversation happening. But the result was his spirit was completely changed. Right. So here's one example. You can see many examples where God is um, touching the physical, then the effect is in the spiritual. So there are times when uh, God will move upon us also in a similar way. You, for example, you know, in words of knowledge, uh, words of knowledge, typically it is comes through what you're seeing. But there are times I feel it in my body. You know, so for example, two Sundays ago, well, that is not yesterday, but the Sunday before. Uh, I was ministering at South Church, so that's one of our locations. And during the worship time, I felt in my body a sharp shooting pain on the left side, lower part, left side. Now, I know I don't have that pain. It's not a pain that, that I carry. But it was a momentary thing. you know. So I knew God is speaking. Now, I just waited. Because what happens? You feel in your body something that God wants to do. Right, so this is God. He's, so that feeling is not in the spirit; it's a feeling in your physical. Right. So um, I felt then, you know, uh, later on during the time of ministry. Uh, actually, it was towards the end of the service. Uh, I called and I called out some other words of knowledge, and one of them was this. But this particular one, I didn't see it in the spiritual. I felt it in the physical, but I called it out anyway, and. You know, people, uh, somebody was there who had that kind of thing. And so many times words of knowledge will come like that. You will feel something in your body uh, rather than it coming through your spiritual senses. Okay. Um, now, why does God do it? Because God, God created a spirit, soul, and body. And while the norm is for him to work spirit to spirit, he can you know, bypass that and just, you know, say, hey, I want to, I want to do something different. So, you know, God's just, just, just doing something as he desires. And we just go with it, yeah. All right, so Christopher's next question. We could say an unbeliever does not have a human spirit. No, no, no. Every human person, has a spirit, soul, and body. Is a spirit, soul, and body. There's no, there's no. A human being cannot exist without a spirit. Every human person is a tripart being: spirit, soul, and body. Okay. Now, is an unbeliever? His human spirit has not been born again, but he has a spirit: spirit, soul, and body. That's every human being: spirit, soul, and body. 
Okay. Let me just pick up some other questions here. Shri Kumar, is it applicable for someone who does not want to repent and is rebellious? Sorry, Shri Kumar, I lost the context of your statement. Um, so you're muted. Sorry? Shri Kumar? Okay, um, I'm not sure Shri Kumar. Okay. Um, Anita, so Anita's comments. Okay, uh, Gideon, is interaction with God very offered food? It's physical, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, all the sacrifices in the Old Testament were physical. They were offering physical offerings, burnt offerings, so on. Yeah, Shri Kumar, uh, yeah, I didn't fine, understand sir. your uh, statement. Uh, in my, uh, there is some problem with the system. Um, then my question is, the, as you are discussing, with uh, discussing, um, sharing the things, what you are, um, what the Christopher asked. So my question is, um, if the God can directly, um, you know, that's the uh, intervene in the body and the uh, the soul part, as you said. So, is it is it applicable for someone who is uh, rebellious and uh, a man who is, for example, we are praying to serve for someone and uh, he's not um, uh, he does not want to repent and uh, that is his condition and somebody is day and night praying for that man and um, and uh, he is even he knows that God is speaking to him but he. He does not want to repent because of that one man's prayer or so many people's prayer for that particular person. Can God directly, rather than touching his spirit, can directly uh, God intervene and uh, change him, transform him? That is my question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the answer is yes. You know, um, uh, that if there are times when God could, just like how we did in the case of Saul, right? Uh, that was a very powerful encounter. Now, uh, which was in the natural realm because uh, it was very, very, you know, Paul couldn't deny it. He was blinded for three days. He was thrown to the ground. So you see in the Bible, uh, there are those when God intervenes physically or when you're in Acts 13, uh, when, when, when um, 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 Paul and Barnabas were on their first missionary journey, they are um, uh, on the island of uh, so I think they, they come to Crete and they're speaking to this governor and there's this uh, this witchcraft, this man who Elimus, the sorcerer. And Paul tells him, you will be blind for a season. And and the man became blind. So it was, a you know, God impacting him so powerfully. Now, did Elimus become a believer? I don't know, but it made a believer out of the governor, you know. Now, it doesn't tell us what happened to him, but that is, that's God touching him in natural. So uh, the answer is yes, God can touch people physically. So usually healings, you think about it, healings, miracles, are God actually touching people in the natural so they can have an encounter with God first physically, uh, and then hopefully that will lead them to repentance. Uh, there could be other you know, supernatural ways that God encounters people naturally. Uh, and uh, and the answer to your question is yes. Uh, Pastor, I just want to know, um, in Paul's case, he was actually, uh, he had zeal for God. And if someone is not having zeal for God, and but because of somebody's prayer, is it possible again? Is it possible? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, so ex I mean, I'm just thinking of an example like John Newton. He, and, and I'm sure there are many examples like this. You know, think about John Newton. He was a slave trader. He had no, uh, he was very rough. He was a sailor, uh, very rough, very, uh, very, very, what let's say, just say he was a wicked person, right? He had no desire for God. And yet, he encountered God, you know, and if you read his story, uh, 
uh, in, in the middle of a storm on the seas, you know, and uh, so God can do anything, yeah. Even for the, the, the most wicked people, God can touch them. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to understand First, we're going to talk about these five spirit faculties, humans faculties, the human spirit, and how God works, how God communicates, interacts with those faculties. Then we're going to talk about the functions of the spirit, because God works even with that. So, and we need to put them together. We need to develop our faculties, our functions, so that spiritually we can become stronger and stronger and let God work through our spirit in ministering to people. And I'll share a few examples as we go along, okay? Okay, um, let's see, now one last question here. Abraham, I just know in my spirit something good is supposed to happen to someone, but the thing ends up being bad. Please, is it that I don't discern well? Um, so Abraham's question is, sometimes I feel in my spirit something good's going to happen to somebody, but something bad happens. Is it that I don't discern well? Well, my, my response, and I, I, I wouldn't always blame, or I wouldn't say you're not discerning well. Sometimes it just could be a matter of timing, right? S sometimes things get worse before they get better, or things get worse before you see the good thing that go that's going to happen. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, I would just say wait a little longer. Tell a person to continue to hold on to the word. Wait a little longer because it, things may get worse before they become better. And, uh, you know, so the, don't think it's, you're not discerning well. Just the way, the timing of things may be different. Okay. All right. Let's uh, pause here on this class now and we will uh, connect into the other class and we will continue this next week. Okay, thanks. <laughs>